What's going on everybody? It's the EV engineer and today I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the voltage levels of the TJA 1050 high speed CAN transceiver. So if you've seen previous videos of mine, you know I'm a big fan of uh, this CAN transceiver right here and I uh, have a breadboard set up with two ESP32s and this CAN transceiver. So this device uh, says that it should be powered by 5 volts. And uh, many people have asked me if, if this is compatible with 3.3 volt microcontrollers or if there is a risk of damaging them. So in this video, I'm going to be taking my pocket oscilloscope right here and I'm going to be measuring various parts of the CAN bus and signals going into the microcontroller. So if you're uh, one of these people who, who are concerned about you know, the voltage levels going into their microcontroller, then stay tuned and I hope to answer those questions today. And as always, if this is your first time on my channel, my name's Josh, I'm an embedded software engineer, and I love making cool videos such as the one you're about to see today. Please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. All right, let's get into it. Hey guys, so we can see here my measurement setup with two ESP32s on a breadboard with their can high and can low twisted pair going into the bus bars on the side of the breadboard. Both ESP32s are powered on, one of them is a transceiver and the other is a receiver. So here is my uh, monitor and we can see that one of them is receiving data and the other one is transmitting data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, look at the signals on the CAN bus with my pocket oscilloscope. So I'm just going to turn it on here. There's a little switch. And uh, we're gonna adjust the settings such that we can see um, the can high and can low. So I'm gonna be looking at the difference between can high and can low to begin with because that is what the actual um, data is going to be. It's going to be the difference between can high and can low. So let's go to uh, my oscilloscope right here and I've already set up um, the settings to be able to uh, perform this measurement. We have uh, 500 millivolts on the uh, voltage grid, which is the vertical scale. Um, I just have a uh, times one um, scale factor, so that's not really doing anything. We're going to be looking at uh, about 20 microsecond um, horizontally on the grid here, uh, AC coupling, uh, and then I'm going to actually um, change the measurement type to just be a single measurement so that we can actually you know get a reading and look at it oh and there we go so we now have a voltage reading right here so i'm going to get get rid of uh this text so we can more easily see the square wave so this is the data that is currently being transmitted on the can bus so let's look at the voltage values so we can see that the the v max here um, or I guess the V peak to peak is, is a better um, proxy to look at, is, is two volts. So what this is telling us is that there, the maximum voltage between can high and can low is, is two volts, which is consistent with the can standard. While we're here, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate some cool things that this uh, oscilloscope can do. So this looks a little funny, so I'm going to move... Um, I'm going to move the signal down so we can offset it like this. Uh, I'll just move it down to the next grid. There we go. Another thing we can do is, um, you know, the signal is taking up a lot of space. So I can go to the voltage scale, change it to one volt. Let's get another measurement. And there. Fits on the screen a little bit better. Uh, depends on your preference. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at each line individually and uh, see what's going on with, with those voltage levels. So I'm going to take this black probe and I'm going to plug it into the ground um, of, of one of the ESP32s as a reference. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Plug that in there. Uh, and we'll keep it at AC coupling for now. And uh, let's perform a measurement. So you might have to do this a few times because 
what's going on is we're actually trying to intercept some of the data packets here with our measurements. So you can see there that it worked. Um, so let's take a look at this. We have, we have voltage max is about one volt. Um, we we kind of get the same information with with V peak to peak. And what this is telling us is that from this little one here, this is our reference. So the maximum voltage we're getting is about one volt from the reference. And, and take note that it's going above the reference. And if you notice, we're measuring can high, which is the white cable going into the red bus, which is what our signal probe is going into. So can high is going to have a one volt offset from the uh, from the, the reference point. Cool. Let's do the same thing with uh, can low. Uh, so I'll, I'll take the signal line and I will plug it into here. Let's repeat the process to see if we get a measurement and look at that, we get one right away. So what do you notice right off the bat? Well, the delta is now going below our reference point. So before it was going above the one, now it's going below the one. Um, and we can see from, from the information printed to the screen, V minimum is about 0.9, um, which is, you know, we can kind of just approximate voltage peak to peak to be one volt. So we're seeing a difference of one volt between the reference and can low. Great. So we know um, the various offsets of can high and can low, but what is, what is the actual voltage of can low, for example? So for that, we're going to change to DC coupling because we want to look at the DC value. And we're, we're also going to go and change uh, the mode. We're going to go to auto mode. Let's start a measurement. And there we go. So the, the voltage is hanging around 2.3 volts uh, DC. So since we're looking at can low, that would mean that uh, whenever a signal, like whenever a bit comes in, it's going to go from 2.3 volts down to um, 1.3 volts approximately. Uh, so let's do a quick check for can high. So let's just go back here. Look at that, we have zero volts. Plug it back in. And it goes back up to 2.3 volts. Isn't that interesting? So what this tells us is that the DC state of the signal for can high and can low is the same. It's about 2.3 volts. But we know that can high has a one volt uh, offset above the uh, reference point when a data bit comes in. So what this means is that the maximum voltage that can high is going to see is about 3.3 volts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move the uh, VCC for the CAN transceiver to 3.3 volts using uh, this pin up here of the ESP32. And I'm going to take a few more measurements to see how the CAN bus responds. So I've now powered both CAN transceivers with 3.3 volts. And I am now measuring CAN high and CAN low again. And interestingly, what we're seeing here is about one volt uh, peak to peak, um, which is different than before, in which case we were powering the CAN transceivers with five volts and getting a, a V peak to peak of about two volts. So we've effectively uh, reduced uh, the delta between CAN high and CAN low um, by 50%. So let's now actually measure the voltage level of uh, CAN. We'll do CAN high just to see uh, what the difference is there. So I can put it into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll go back here. Um, we will try to get a measurement. And this is giving me, um, this is AC coupling. So I should change that to DC so that we get the voltage level. And sometimes I need to change this to auto. And we're seeing that the voltage level is hanging around 1.6 
volts. Previously, when we had uh, the five volt setup, we were seeing around 2.3 volts um, for, for VMAX. So right there, we're seeing a pretty significant difference in the voltage level of the CAN bus uh, since we are powering the CAN transceivers with uh, lower voltage. So many people ask me in one of my previous videos if we can use this five volt CAN transceiver with a 3.3 volt microcontroller. So I'm just gonna show real quick uh, some of the measurements that I took uh, on, the, on the signal line going into the microcontroller to see if there was a risk of damaging the ESP32. So to start off, let's use VCC is equal to five volts for the CAN transceiver. And let's just see what the value of TX is when nothing is connected to it. So if I put the, the probe onto the TX and I'll move this out of the way. So this is not connected to anything. We can go to the oscilloscope and we will just go to auto mode and we get 4.06 volts, which is what I measured here. So 4.06 volts. And I also measured earlier that the standard voltage of any GPIO really is 3.28 volts. Now remember, uh, this firmware sets up TX and RX as active low signals. So it's going to be 3.28 by default. So then I was curious, I said, okay, let's just do a direct connection between the GPIO pin and the TX pin. And let's see what happens. So if I move the signal line uh, right here, and let's look at what the value is. It's 3.28 volts. That's what I wrote down here. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that the GPIO pin is just overpowering this TX pin. Okay, so then I was curious, what happens if we put a resistor in between the two uh, signals? So let's move this here and we'll move the probe to the side going into the microcontroller because that's what we care about. And if we look, it's 3.28 volts again. 3.28 volts. And actually, I might as well just show what is the voltage level uh, before the resistor? 3.42, so 3.4 volts. So what this is doing is it's, it's pretty much just equalizing the voltage levels again with uh, probably just a really small voltage drop in the middle. Okay, so we don't really have any concern, at least uh, using the average values of damaging the GPI open. But what about what about the actual signal, the combined DC and AC signal? Okay, well, let's take a look. We will go to here, we'll do AC coupling. Um, actually, we don't need AC coupling, but we can just look at the single snapshot of the signal. We just got to make sure we reset the SP32 so that we actually get some data. So we get 3.4 and 0.12 as the maximum and minimum to give a peak to peak voltage of about 3.53. So GPIO4 line, we have about 3.4 and about 0.12, which is what we just measured with a voltage peak to peak of 3.52. So you might be a little concerned uh, with the fact that we're going above 3.3 volts here and a little bit below 0.12 volts. So what I did next, is I said, okay, well, let's power with VCC is equal to 3.3 and let's see if we get better results. So let's just do that. Let's move the power up here. Let's see what the value of the TX um, voltage is. So let's go to auto 2.7. So the value is 2.7 volts. So what does this tell us about TX? We can see here that when VCC is five volts, TX is 4.06. When it's 3.3 volts, TX is 2.7. And if you actually look at the data sheet, 
Uh, they say TX is supposed to be VCC, so we can clearly see like there's some losses in this device, uh, but it is, it is safe to say that TX will be less than VCC. Okay, so now let's uh, see what happens if we connect 3.28 volts through a resistor to the TX pin. Now we don't have to do it again, but uh, I guess you can trust me that I tried this. But if if we connect to this one here, it's it's just gonna it's just gonna dominate this connection again, and we'll see you know similar results even if we pass through the resistor. So we'll move this down here, and let's now measure the voltage value 3.28. Okay, and let's move the probe here. We get 3.28 again. So it's just. It's just going to the voltage of the GPIO pin, which is interesting because in this case, it's actually pulling up the voltage. So now lastly, let's, uh, let's get a snapshot of our signal. So I will reset this, reset this to get them talking again, and we get a reading. So it is pretty consistently uh, 3.4, to 0 0.13, so about the same as before, right? So 3.4, 0 0.12, and 3.5 peak to peak. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that in both cases, we're getting the exact same signal going into the microcontroller. And to, to finish off this analysis, let's look at the AC component, just the pure AC component of this signal. So let's look at the value. It's going up by 0 0.1, up 0 0.1, and then it's going down 3.44 to get the voltage peak to peak of 3.55. Now we already know that, we already know that the, the value of the GPIO pin is about 3.28. Okay, so what is 3.28 plus 0 0.1? Yeah, it's about 3.39, okay. And then we know that it's going to go down about 3.44. So what is uh, 3.4 uh, 3 minus 3.44? Well, it's about zero. Now, before we wrap up this video, guys, I just want to briefly uh, point out here this data sheet. And I'll link it in the description below if you want to take a look yourself. Uh, but they do say here that the input levels are compatible with 3.3 volt and 5 volt devices. And based on the measurements we took today, I would recommend powering uh, the CAN transceiver with five volts and not 3.3 volts, uh, because we saw the effects that it had on the CAN bus at 3.3 volts. If you try to connect other CAN devices to this bus, uh, then the different voltage levels are not gonna be compatible. So there's no point in powering this device with 3.3 volts. And they do actually say here that the supply voltage uh, should be you know, five volts, not 3.3 volts. So I would trust that, you know, the designers of this device, uh, you know, knew what they were doing when they, when they said that you should use five volt supply and when they said that input levels are compatible with 3.3 and five volt devices. And uh, the experiments we did today seem to, uh, you know, confirm that uh, hypothesis if you were ever in doubt. So, um, Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If there's any part of this video you want to discuss in the comments below, I'd be happy to uh, get a thread going. I'm sure many of you guys are very experienced electronic design engineers, and I myself am an embedded software engineer, so I'm always happy to uh, discuss. All right, have a nice day.